Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and our guest today is Nancy Lee Sanchez. She's the executive director of the Kaplan Education Foundation. They're doing amazing work, and you want to know about it, so stick around. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another changemaker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you and appreciate you taking the time to, to join us. There's a lot going on at the uh, Kaplan Education Foundation. Uh, tell us a little bit about your your mission and objectives. Let's just put our discussion into some context. Sure, so the Kaplan Educational uh, Foundation's mission is really to get underrepresented, historically underrepresented students who are currently attending uh, community colleges into selective institutions. But we have also brought in that impact by um, really widening the work that we do and have all their initiatives such as the transfer initiative program which works with uh, community college students in the new york city area and also our guide which mean which aims to also work with other groups such as uh on uh, all their underserved groups veterans we're looking also at students with children as well as daca and undocumented students so we are widening our reach each day that's tremendous i i really uh admire the work that you're doing. You recently published a new book. Tell us about the, the book that you published. Well, the book is called Your 2018 um, Guide to College Transfer, and it really came out of the last 10 years, the work that we have been doing. Uh, we really, uh, we have collected the profiles of about 90 top schools and what are their policies, housing, admissions, uh, as well as financial aid for non-traditional students and so although it's a guide that can be used by any transfer student or anyone considering transfer it really targets information for those groups that so need information well there are a lot of people in that group and I think we we who attended four-year colleges straight through underestimate the number of people in this situation people who are aspiring and uh, to this kind of uh, opportunity, but start out at community colleges. Uh, uh, I know here in Utah, there are nearly as many people enrolled in two-year uh, community colleges as there are enrolled in four-year schools. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the, the data and the con put, help us put this into context. So, so I'll give you an, uh, a data point that I always strikes me that I actually keep by my desk, and that is that 81% of students who entered a community college uh, from the low uh, income uh, bracket, 81% say they want to transfer to institutions. Think about the thousands of, there are thousand, close to 1,200 colleges, community colleges. And so if you look at 81% want to transfer, only 26% actually transfer and only 10% get a bachelor's degree. So here we have a group of students who are accessing higher education and as you know accessing higher education into itself is a problem. It's many barriers and so those that say I want to transfer don't transfer. Uh, the majority again only 25 about a quarter and then only 10% actually complete that bachelor's degree. We know how important it is and the earning potential of a student with an associate's degree versus one with a bachelor's. It is true that students who pursue an associate's degree immediately after graduation earn higher income than someone with a bachelor's degree, but that quickly falls off. Very quickly, we find that as the years progress, you're not advancing, you really need to continue your education. And so we want to make sure we target, especially groups where leadership is, is so needed. Our argument is that if we want to solve the world's issues, we really need everyone at the table. And we know that in many of the selective institutions, we're not, we're divided. We don't have all of those groups all together. And so it's really important that we create pathways for, uh, a diff for, for, those, for diversity of an, a different type at all four-year institutions. Now you've got a kind of a three-pronged programs, you call them three different solutions for helping to 
improve these numbers. Uh, the, um, the first is the Kaplan Leadership Program. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the Kaplan Leadership Program, we work with a small group of students each year. We, it's about 20 students. Many of them are in their associate's degree, but many of them are in their four year. We work with four year institutions to make sure they know that there are some amazing community college students out there. And so we provide our students with admissions, transfer admissions support, as well as support to make sure that they um, visit those schools, that they have all of the fees covered uh, necessary to apply for those schools. And we develop them as leaders. We provide them with workshops, with mentorships. We provide them with all kinds of resources to make sure that they are prepared and truly ready to take on the challenges of a four-year institution. By the way, students graduate top of the class from four year in, from schools like Stanford, like Brown, like Amherst. And so we're proud to say that if these schools look at the students, they will find that they are going to be very successful in, in, in future leaders as well. So that's, that's the Kaplan Leadership Program. Great, and then the solution number two is the Transfer Initiative Program. Tell us about that. So uh, this came out of us, uh, the board and I speaking about how great we were doing in the Kaplan Leadership Program, but how we wanted it to be a bigger program. But as you know, we are a public charity, 5013C, although we are supported greatly by Kaplan and other donors. We, you know, th this is a, a, a labor intensive uh, process. And so we launched the Transfer Initiative Program, which targets a wider group of students. We don't provide as many resources, meaning we don't provide a stipend or a laptop, which we do to our scholars, but we do provide them with all of the resources and information available. So they do get to meet with four-year institutions. We do get to advise them about how to apply uh, to these four years, and we advocate for them at those four years in the same way as our Kaplan scholars. And uh, this is a pilot that we launched this year and it has been highly successful behind me. You will find that there are about 12 students right now sending applications. This is the time for transfer application deadlines. So if you see a head behind me, they're looking for some information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's great. And then uh, the third solution is the book that we already talked about, right? Yes, and, and we're so proud of that because, again, how do you have information and don't share it? If we know, I mean, I, we, I learned about this myself. I'm a community college student myself, and our students and I were spending hours in the staff here finding transfer information each year. When is the deadline? How many transcripts do you need? Do you need them at the beginning of the semester and at the end once you complete your school? Do you have to pay for both? What is the financial aid available? Is housing provided to me if I have a child? If I am non-traditional age, do I have to do a special form? So all of these things were things that we only knew. So we wanted to put it together in this book and we have, but also give advice on how a student can become what we call a transfer star also give students the language. I'll tell you a story. If you go to four-year institutions, you'll find a guide, usually a freshman or, you know, a sophomore or junior, that it's like I has three majors, double minoring, has traveled the world, has done all of these amazing things. And the students that we bring to those schools, we want them to be able to understand all of that. What does, what is uh, study abroad at that four-year institution? What does it look like to sit down to have a professor in a small class setting to have these discussions? Uh, what type of degrees are available? So having the language to be able to decipher the world around you and be a good consumer of education is key. And we focus on that also in the book. Uh, it's really uh, inspiring work that you're doing. What is the most important lesson you've learned over the years that you've been working on this? Uh, um, that we all have to work together, that four-year institutions need to understand the value of diverse diversity. That's meaning it's not just about income or race, it's about what are the experiences that people that usually do not have access to those institutions have, and are you valuing them? If the student took an online class while they were serving the military, you should really look at that student, that's a leader. You may not, there may not be boxes in your application to check off, uh, 
But you really have to sit down and, and evaluate students like that. Also that if you're discussing poverty in a sociology class, how important it is for you to have people in that classroom that have uh, seen poverty, but that also have fought against poverty in our examples of what happens when education is part of someone's life and, and it's deliberate in their processes. So also, I'll give you one um, uh, clue to the transfer admissions application. That is that these four-year institutions are very likely to give you a fee waiver. So if for your audience and for anyone that is out there, tell people to apply. I didn't apply to four-year institutions because I thought that the $50 fee at that time was too high. So I only applied to one school. The fact is that these schools will issue a fee waiver. And by the way, again, the magic is that you don't need to submit forms. You don't need to prove income. You just have to say, I cannot pay this fee. And that school is very likely to waive it. So please spread that news around because That's that really great. is the uh, Great bit of knowledge right there, for sure. Uh, Nancy, obviously you have a real passion for this, but where does that passion come from? Uh, why do you care so much about helping kids make this transition from community college to a four-year school? You know, I, I never, I live in New York City, and you probably hear the noise of New York City right now. This is a vibrant city that is really separated. Someone that came from Puerto Rico and attended Kingsborough Community College. I um, had a lot of dreams, but I felt extremely limited in the resources, but I knew that I was surrounded in that community college with some really bright people. I started working at that community college and I confirmed that everyone there really had a lot of goals, but very little resources. And my students would come and say, I want to be a doctor. I want to uh, deal with the issues in my community. I want to get more people to vote. And that meant the education was the answer for that. It was very little resource. So I am committed in, in the last 20 years, I've devoted myself to creating access that really is meaningful. I think access and inclusion and lately as we talk college success, it's really become now uh, 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 not just getting them in, that's the easy part. If you have a high need student, you have to make a commitment to, to supporting them. And as someone that didn't know what Ivy was, I didn't even know what the SAT was to work for the Kaplan Educational Foundation. And I do swear this is something I thought that the SAT was a Saturday test. And so <laughs> it's like you take it on Saturday. Yeah. And, and I'm, I was surrounded by many people who felt the same way. They may not have verbalized it or had a medium to verbalize it, but I did and I could admit to that. But I live to make sure that any of the problems of this world are resolved through education and through very sound, sound analytical thinking and processes that includes everybody at the table. Nancy, what is your superpower? <laughs> my superpower is when I look at my students. My students are really out there inspiring people. I have a student right now who is um, in West Africa resolving the issues of West Africans saying nonprofits that come in here really need to take into consideration the needs of the people. I have students who are pursuing medical school right now in, in Puerto Rico, uh, my island that it's really has been hit. And I have a student who has committed herself to attending medical school there. So just I'm surrounded by people who dream big and who don't look at the barriers as you know, they look at that as inspiration to remove those barriers for other people. So I feel like it's the, the, the ripple effect for anyone in education. You can easily see that ripple effect of education. And um, I, I live by that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I ride that wave each day. So that's my superpower that I see it. I see its effectiveness. No, oh, that's great. Well, <laughs> Nancy, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, will you take just a minute and tell us uh, how people can learn more about the Kaplan Education Foundation and how they can connect with you personally? Sure. So in, in preparation for this um, um, interview, and as we are trying to spread the word, we actually are offering our guide on Amazon, uh, the Kindle version for free. Uh, this guide is in the hands of over a thousand uh, advisors in the, across the nation, but we wanted to make sure it was in the hands of the students. So if we can share that, and you can go to the Kaplan Ed foundation or Kaplan Educational Foundation 
www.ghanaspeaks.org and you will find there uh, a link also to free resources on how to save money in the point of transfer, uh, the timeline for transfer and other things. So please visit our website, um, follow us also on Facebook, Kaplan Ed Foundation, and, and just make sure you spread the news that transfer students really are the best way for four-year institutions to bring diversity. All righty. Well, Nancy, uh, we thank you for all of the great work that you're doing, for taking the time to be with us today, and we wish you every success in helping more kids finish a four-year college degree. Thank you for, for sharing this with, with me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. All righty. Let's do some good. Yes. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. This podcast is available at youtube.com forward slash Devonthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other change maker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devin is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com.